Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video in bonding. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we're doing re drawing resonance structures number three. That's right, number three. So we're going to draw the resonance structure for the thiocyanate ion. So this is a polyatomic ion, one of those that you have to memorize. So let's hopefully you have memorized this. That is SCN minus one. So you're going to look on your periodic table and count up the number of valence electrons in sulfur, in carbon, and in nitrogen, and then add one with that negative one charge. The number of valence electrons in sulfur are six, in carbon are four, in nitrogen are five. So you're going to add all those up, then divide by two. Find the least electronegative element. That is which one? I believe that is that carbon. That's going to go right in the middle there. And then the other two elements go on either side of it. Then you're going to place bonding pairs of electrons between the central element and the outside element, lone pairs of electrons on the outside elements, and then you're going to verify the octet rule. Everybody follows the octet rule over here. So let's draw one of the three different resonance structures for the thiocyanate ion. Here it is, right here. Notice that I do have the brackets on this and the minus one charge to indicate that this is an ion and it does have a charge. And that also should tell you right now the polarity of the molecule as well, even if it's symmetrical, if it were. Okay, but it is not. So you should see that on the left-hand side, I have a sulfur that is singly bonded. On the right-hand side, I have that nitrogen that's triple bonded. Okay, that's one of the resonance structures. Now, if you got that one, fantastic. If you didn't get that one, then you probably have one of the other resonance structures. So I'm going to give you the other resonance structure, which is right here. And that is still, I'm remaining, I'm keeping, that is, the carbon in the middle and the nitrogen and the sulfur on either side. And I'm not changing the sulfur and the nitrogen. I'm keeping them in the same places stationary. Then I should have double bonds on this one. Then here's another resonance structure. Maybe you drew this one first or maybe second, but here's the other one right here. And that's with a triple bond on that sulfur and a single bond on that nitrogen with three sets of lone pairs of electrons. Okay. Of course, you have to have arrows in between these to denote that these are resonance structures. So all three of these are resonance structures. Not one of them is the best one in this case at this moment in time. Okay. So they are all equivalent for us at this moment in time. Now, all of them follow the AX2 structure, and that is to get the geometry of this, the molecular shape, which is two bonding and no non-bonding regions on the central element. Okay, it doesn't matter which resonance structure you follow, you're gonna get that same information. From that, you should figure out that this molecule is linear, okay? And it is a bond angle of 180 degrees because it is linear. Okay. Furthermore, this molecule is polar because it is asymmetric and it has dipoles that are not the same and the net charge in the molecule is negative. So it has a net charge that is negative and therefore it's polar. Bam, end of story. And furthermore, even without the negative charge, this would be a polar molecule because it does have polar bonds and it is asymmetric. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get the bond order for this molecule here. Well, actually, this is an ion. Okay, so the number of bonds and the number of regions. And we can look at any one of the three resonance structures to determine the bond order. Okay, so if you look at the far left hand one, the number of bonds are four, the number of regions are two. If you look at the central one, the number of bonds are four, the number of regions are two. If you look at the right hand one, the number of bonds are four, the number of regions are two. So it doesn't matter which resonance structure you look at, the bond order is going to be the same, which is four bonds over two regions, and that's a bond order of two. So experimentally, each of these bonds is double bond. Okay, now. There is a difference between each one of these resonance structures, okay? And there's a way to distinguish these resonance structures, and that is called formal charge. Now, that's beyond the scope of this class, so you're going to have to watch some of my other videos for advanced placement chemistry, which cover formal charge, and that is a way to distinguish which one of these three resonance structures is the predominant resonance structure, and that's via formal charge. Okay, that is another crazy hat video. I am the crazy hat chemist and there is no bull about this. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'm going to see you next time. For more cool chemistry videos, we're going to be talking about intermolecular forces. I can't wait for that. Bye now.